Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be assembling a kit that I recently picked up for the four adapter, so the number four with uh, adapter after it. It is an Arduino Pro Micro based adapter that runs the uh, Demon Byte uh, open source software that allows different controllers to be adapted uh, to be USB controllers. It's a very low latency solution and uh, I specifically picked it up for use with my Mister. There's a new uh, Nintendo 64 core, and I wanted to be able to play with the original N64 controllers. So the kit comes with uh, all the parts. Uh, you can get it either assembled or as the, uh, the kit, and it has all the, uh, the specific uh, controller ports uh, for Super Nintendo, uh, NES, N64, and the 9-pin uh, Genesis port. Uh, you can also use that port for the uh, Commodore 64, Atari, a lot of those other controllers that use that same 9-pin uh, port. Uh, the adapter itself is based on the uh, Arduino Pro Micro, which has a, a USB-C connector. And then you can hook that up to either a Retro PC, uh, RetroPie system, or the Mister, basically anything that supports uh, USB controls. And then they have the uh, STL files, so you can 3D print the case. Uh, once you have the uh, the project completed, or you can order the case uh, and the whole assembled system directly uh, from the Tendi store. I'll have that linked in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with the contents of the bag, we have a couple of PCBs, and then there are the plug sockets themselves. They're all uh, fairly good quality and have nice thick connector pins. As you'll see in a little bit, I did have a little bit of problem with the uh, one of the pins getting a little too hot and melting the uh, housing on the N64, but it uh, ended up straightening out and, and being fine. All of the parts are fairly easy to uh, locate their locations on the board. I started off with most of the shorter parts and then began attaching the uh, controller sockets with the uh, Super Nintendo one going first and then testing the fit within the uh, 3D printed board. You'll want to make sure that uh, you solder one or two pins first uh, so you've got a little bit of wiggle room in case it needs to be uh, slightly shifted to uh, align with the uh, 3D printed case. And then we moved on to some of the other connectors. The uh, N64 one in particular is on a little uh, daughter board and then that board itself gets uh, mounted onto the uh, lower PCB. This was probably the most tricky part of the assembly for me, uh, getting that daughter board lined up um, and making sure that uh, everything was, was uh, connected correctly. And then the final piece that I soldered on was the headers and the Pico board itself. So before I assemble the final case, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, give it a test run, uh, just so we can fix any last uh, issues before putting the case on and uh, sealing everything up. So let's go ahead and start with uh, an NES controller. Got all my uh, controllers laid out here. I believe you can have multiple controllers uh, at the same time with this adapter, but let's try first with the uh, single controller. So we're giving it power. And I'm just on a uh, website here, hardwaretester.com. They have a uh, gamepad tester in the browser. There we go. So it's showing up. Okay, so it's uh, player four here. So let's jump over to that controller. So we're getting axis one, negative one, positive one, axis zero, negative one, positive one. That looks good. Select is working, start is working, B and A. So the NES appears to be working. I'm also curious if you can use uh, Atari or other uh, joysticks with that connector. Okay, so now we've got, I'm leaving the NES and the Genesis. We'll do a test with two. Okay, so those are both in place. Let's see if the NES is still working. It is. These probably show up as 
multiple controllers on the same USB. Okay, so axis one, axis two, A, B, and C, and start. Okay, Genesis controller is working. 8-bit dough gamepad. So we will put the adapter in place for that. And let's power up again. And that is in slot one. And we've got our X or uh, axis one, axis two, Y, X, B, A, select, select and start, both work, L and R. Okay, so we're good there. Was the main reason I got the uh, adapter was that I was wanting to uh, be able to play the new Mr. Core with the uh, original N64 controller. So let's power it up and uh, see what we get here. So now we've got all four going. Okay, so this is showing up under slot two, looks like. There we go. And so we've got our uh, analog values coming through. So that looks good. I'm going between, looks like 0.9 on the horizontal and negative 0.9 roughly. Maybe 0.93, but that could just be whatever value this controller is throwing off. Looks like vertical, I'm getting one and negative one, but horizontal, yeah. 0.9 and negative 0.9. We've got our Z trigger, B, A, all the C buttons, start, D pad looks good, and L and R. So I think we're uh, all functional. Let's go ahead and get the uh, case in place and uh, we'll try it out on the Mister. So I've got the adapter uh, hooked up to my Mr. FPGA system up here in my uh, office upstairs. The, uh, for those of you that don't know, the Mr. is a uh, FPGA system that allows you to uh, emulate at the hardware level, uh, older systems, everything down from the original Atari all the way up to uh, the newest core is the N64. So it allows you to get sort of a hardware level recreation of those systems. For now, I've just got it hooked up to my Dell 24-inch, uh, uh, this uh, 1920 by uh, 1280 display. And uh, I've got the Mr. set up in a, uh, a small form factor old PC case there. And then it has some uh, USB ports on the front that are uh, run inside into the Mr. And I've got our uh, four controller adapter hooked up here. So see if we can use the uh, adapter on the Mr. I've got the same 8-bit uh, dough uh, SNES controller hooked up to the SNES port. On the NES port, I've got the uh, NES Advantage. I have the N64 controller and then a Sega Genesis controller hooked up. Uh, let's just try out a, a few uh, quick games to see how it uh, works on the Mister. We'll start off with the uh, Genesis here and might as well go with the classic. We'll do Sonic. Feels very responsive. Um, everything that I've read on the adapter, it's using uh, extremely low latency uh, code and uh, implementation um, based on the uh, open source uh, daemon byte, I believe it's referenced to, and uh, gives you a, a really good uh, play experience. Uh, virtually no lag in uh, button presses. Feels very like the original system. Uh, you can hook up direct uh, original con uh, controllers directly into the Mister, uh, where it's actually running directly into the uh, input lines that would have been on the original console. Um, but it's a little trickier to do uh, multiple controllers for uh, multiplayer and uh, some other things that you would you would want to have there. Uh, so something like this adapter is a really easy way to uh, just run those in through the USB. So let's uh, switch over to another game. 
I'm just using a keyboard. Uh, it's a little easier than uh, the controllers. Generally, I'll use the um, Xbox uh, controller, uh, which has a, me a dedicated menu button, which makes it a little easier to get into some of the Mr. Menus. But it's also really nice to be able to go back and play on some of these original controllers. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start this up. Playing sort of off center here, so it would be the greatest run through, but uh, I'll give you an idea that uh, you can use all these old controllers and uh, a really good experience. Just like you would on the uh, original hardware. Yeah, so that uh, seems to be working great as well. Let's go ahead and uh, next jump over to the uh, Super Nintendo. Let's just load up, um, how about some Mega Man? So technically this controller is just uh, USB, so it could be hooked directly to the Mr., uh, but it is going through the Super Nintendo adapter that we uh, just built. Show that Super Nintendo controller support. So we'll just do a quick play here. And again here, everything feels uh, real responsive, not noticing any lag in the controls. There are still some limitations of using uh, this adapter. You wouldn't be able to use like the, uh, the NES um, zapper gun. The mister, you can use it, uh, but you do need to use that direct connect method. Um, where it's routing the, the zapper inputs directly into the FPGA itself. And then um, obviously I have to be using a uh, CRT analog video output as well for the, the light gun to function. So let's move on to the N64. And maybe we need to map it in the core itself now. Because I'm not seeing, okay, define N64 buttons. Okay, right, left, down, up. Press A, B, start. L, R, Z, C up, C right, C down, C left. No, okay. I believe this should be working now because we've got the analog working here. So if we go back out of the menu, there we go. Okay, we're good now. So we've got our analog in uh, both X and Y. Let's go ahead and launch into the game. One thing you'll notice, the uh, both the, the horizontal aspect ratio, we're keeping the four by three, but the the top and the bottom, I have some bars right now. And that's because I have the Mr. Set to integer scale. Uh, by default, it uh, will do a even multiple of the original console. Um, so you could have it stretch, but then you're gonna get a little bit of unevenness in the scaling. Uh, so right now it's getting a perfect one to one pixel scaling um, or doubling, you know, depending on the, uh, the ratio, how it works out uh, to, to get the maximum size you can with an even scaling on the screen. Okay, so let's see if our analog is working correctly here. So I can walk slow 
and I can start going faster and then get a run. So it looks like the, uh, the analog is working correctly. Got our jumps. The Z is working on the bottom. Got our camera controls with the uh, C buttons. It looks like uh, all four controller ports are working. Um, I look forward to kind of exploring some of the other options, uh, especially the uh, nine pen uh, Genesis style controller um, that was used for Atari, Commodore controllers, a number of other uh, controllers in the past. So for some of those cores on the Mister, uh, that would be a great option as well. Uh, so I'll have to test that out. But uh, I think we've uh, seen that it's working pretty well. And uh, so far, I'm really impressed. So I think that wraps up the testing and assembly of the Ford adapter. This was a uh, really fun project and I think will be really useful uh, for the Mister. So uh, it's nice to have uh, all those controller options ready to go. And uh, I think there was a, a few hiccups along the way there with uh, getting things to line up just right. Uh, but I think if you're careful with your assembly, um, that's a, a good way to save some money in uh, getting the kit version versus the pre-assembled. And as we saw, I think the uh, latency is really good. Definitely uh, didn't have any issues getting the uh, controllers uh, configured and working on my uh, various systems I tried it on. So uh, I think that wraps it up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.